Alton Towers is the biggest and one-off, if not the best theme parks in the UK. The park features some of the most thrilling rides and roller coasters in the world, but also accommodates to the younger guests and those non-thrill seekers who prefer a nice chilled out stroll across the historic gardens. There's something for everyone, however due to the size of this park and the amount of attractions, restaurants and entertainment it holds, there's only so much you can fit into one day. Now I've been to Alton Towers countless times, and although it's almost impossible to be able to do absolutely everything in just one day, there are some things that may be slowing your trip down which could easily be avoided. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the top 8 things that you should avoid on your trip to Alton Towers in 2022. But first, before we get on into the video, if you do enjoy watching, be sure to hit that like button and or comment down below to let us know. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you're feeling extra cheeky, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single thing, because we make plenty of theme park and adventure videos here at the KD Adventures, which you don't want to miss. Number 8. Not taking advantage of the lockers. Now, lots of you have probably been there before. You've arrived at a theme park with a backpack filled with snacks, drinks, clothes, and all sorts of items you may need throughout the day at the park. I always try my best to not bring a bag, However, there have been occasions, for example, where I've checked out at a resort hotel uh, and wanted to spend another afternoon at the resort's theme park, so I've taken my bag filled with all my clothes and overnight stuff with me. Right as you enter through the turnstiles at Alton Towers, you will find a bunch of lockers. Now, these lockers, they only cost £5 to hire out for the whole day, and you can keep coming back and reopening the locker with no additional fees. Now, say you have a huge bag which won't fit in a locker. Well, Alton Towers also have larger lockers, which should hopefully be able to store a large or multiple bags. These lockers cost a little bit more, however, if you have no choice than to take your large bag, then I would definitely recommend paying to hire one out for the day. Alton Towers is huge, so you don't want to be carrying around extra weight when there's really no need. So if you can, avoid bringing a bag, but if you have no choice, then there's no need to worry. Number 7. Going to Wicker Man and the Smiler first. A classic mistake lots of people make is arriving at the park in the morning and heading straight to the first two major coasters in the park, to the left being the Wicker Man and to the right being the Smiler. These two coasters are incredible and of course an absolute must when visiting Alton Towers. However, you'll find that in the morning, everyone else heads straight to these two coasters too as they're the most popular and closest rides to the entrance. Therefore, the queues may be an hour plus first thing in the morning, where you could be spending that time riding the other big coasters in the park, and then coming back to the Spider and the Wicker Man later in the day, when those queues are relatively less busy. Personally, I always begin my day in Forbidden Valley, where I can take advantage of Nemesis before that area and coaster get busy from around midday and the afternoon. Number 6. Not checking the single rider queue first. And talking of the Smiler, let's talk more about the Smiler. This huge world record holding 14 inversion coaster is a fan favourite, so it's no surprise that it's one of the most popular rides at Alton Towers. Depending on how busy the day is, the queue for the Smiler can vary between 1 to 3 hours in the peak season. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate queuing. So queuing for hours is not on my to-do list when visiting the park. But what a lot of people don't realise is that there is a single rider queue which can dramatically reduce your waiting time. The single rider queue is used to fill in the spaces on each train. For example, if a row seats 4 riders and a group of 3 want to ride, the ride ops will send in a single rider to fill in the gap. Of course, if you are of a group and you want to ride as a group, then this is not the option for you. But if you don't mind riding alone, then I would 100% recommend checking out the single rider queue before joining that regular standby line. There is a good chance that the wait time for the single rider queue will be significantly shorter, with a much shorter wait time. So if you want to make more out of your day, then definitely check it out. Number 5. Buying fast passes midweek and during quiet periods. Just like with all theme parks across the world, Throughout the year, some days will be super busy, and then some days will be quiet. It all depends on different events that happen at the park, and also when it's the school holidays. 
From experience, I find the best time to visit for lower crowd levels is weekdays during spring. The worst time to visit and the month I usually try to avoid is August. It's a great time to visit in terms of weather, however it's usually incredibly busy every day of the week and it's likely that you won't get much done compared to if you were to visit any other time of the year. But say you are visiting on a weekday in May. One mistake a lot of people think is thinking that they will need a fast pass package to guarantee getting on every ride in the park. If you're unaware of what a fast pass is, here's an additional ticket that can be purchased to skip the regular queues. These fast pass packages can cost a lot of money per person, and if you're visiting on a quiet day, then it's really not worth it at all. Visiting on a weekday usually means a maximum wait of 20 minutes, so paying over £100 to skip a 10 to 20 minute queue, it's just pointless. So next time you're booking a trip to Alton Towers, keep in mind what day you're visiting on, and also remember that if you do arrive at the park and find it's really busy, you can always buy your fast pass tickets on the app on the day. Number 4. Visiting Towers Trading at the End of the Day I don't know about you, but I love collecting theme park merchandise. Alton Towers have a huge range of merchandise every year at the park, and all of it can be found at Towers Trading, a store on Towers Street which sells merch, toys, sweets, chocolate and more. Towers Trading is a pretty big store, and for most of the day you'll find it's pretty quiet, because people are off riding rides and coasters. However, when it comes to the park closing, everyone heads towards Towers Trading, especially with it being at the exit of the park. Especially during recent times where they've had to limit the amount of people that can go inside of a building, at the end of the day you'll usually have to join a big queue just to get inside the store. After queuing all day for rides, this is the last thing you want. So I would personally recommend that if you would like some merch, then visit Towers Trading during lunch hours, maybe after you've had something to eat. Going back to what I mentioned earlier about the lockers, if you do buy any merch midday, then there's no need to worry, because there's a place to store it. Number 3. Going for lunch at a restaurant at midday Whilst we're on the topic of lunch, here's a time-saving tip about restaurants. Throughout the day, it's obvious that you're going to get hungry. There's plenty of food options at Alton Towers, whether it be snacks, restaurants, or if you want a very light snack, vending machines. If you are planning on eating at one of the restaurants, then try your best to avoid the general lunch hours between 11 and 1. This is the time that most guests want to have their lunch, and it can get really busy. You'll find yourself waiting in a queue for a restaurant, which you could be spending riding rides. I personally would recommend visiting after 1pm, but having said that, you can't help when you get hungry. So if you're craving pizza and pasta at midday, then go for it. But if you can hold off for a little bit, then I would definitely recommend just waiting a little bit longer. Number 2. Waiting in queues over 1 hour before the end of the day Another queue avoiding tip now. Now I hate waiting in queues, so I'll find every tip I can to avoid them. As I mentioned earlier, at the very start of the day, rides such as the Wicker Man and the Smiler can be really busy. As the day goes on, they usually become less busy, however if you're visiting on a busier day, then this isn't always the case, especially with the Smiler. This coaster can have long wait times all day, no matter what time it is. So if you're visiting on a busier day, and there are queues for certain rides over an hour, then try and join the queue just before the park closes. If you didn't already know, the queues for rides and coasters close at the advertised closing time. However, those rides and coasters operate until everyone in the queue has had a ride. So if you make the most out of your day riding the less busy rides, you can then join the coaster with the longer queue just before the park closes. Now you might still have to wait an hour plus, but at least you're going to get on the ride. Number 1. Not searching for deals. And that includes you annual pass holders. Finally, let's talk about a money saving tip, and this one also includes you and your pass holders. If you don't already know, there are so many buy one get one free deals out there on cereal boxes, hand soap, and across the internet. Always check to see if there are any promotions on before visiting, because you could end up paying double the price when all it takes is to buy some hand soap for a pound. It's definitely worth it. These promotions usually run throughout the season, so always check before visiting, and if you do find one of those offers, then be sure to tell all of your friends too. 
I mentioned earlier about visiting during weekdays and less busy periods. Now, this sometimes can't be helped due to school and work, but if possible, try your best to visit on a weekday, because not only will you be able to ride more rides and get more out of your day, you'll also save money if you want a short break. Prices are much cheaper at the resort's hotels during weekdays. For example, here's how much it costs to stay at the Splash Landings Hotel on a Tuesday, and this is how much it costs to stay at Splash Landings Hotel on a Saturday that very same month. Some other hotels at the resort, such as the Enchanted Village, could cost around £300 a night. So I know it might not be possible to visit on a weekday or outside of school holidays, but if possible and you would like a short break at the resort, then I would 100% recommend to try and visit during those quiet periods. So there we have it, 8 mistakes to avoid at Alton Towers in 2022 to make the most out of your day at the park. Do you have any more tips? then leave them down in the comments below for other viewers to check out. We'll be visiting and vlogging Alton Towers lots this year, so be sure to stay tuned on the channel because there is plenty to come. Uh, and along with that, if you want to go check out all our other Alton Towers vlogs, then I'll leave a link down in the description below to where you can check out that playlist. Uh, but yeah, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.